Right, let's get stuck into the mechanics of this old 1985 MR2. Now, as soon as we popped the hood, I suppose it's called a hood slash bonnet even though it's at the rear, we were greeted by a pretty grim sight. This is not a good looking engine bay, it's disgusting, it looks like a black hole of death. And there are quite a few things that immediately caught my eye. Number one, the battery. It is disgusting, it's corroded, the wires are broken off, it looks terrible. Number two, the water bottle, the expansion bottle for the radiator and coolant system is just so old that it's crumbled and it's fallen apart. We're going to look at these things first, but I just wanted to remind you that the things we're doing here will apply to any old engine bay, so you're going to learn something whether you have a Toyota MR2 or not. Now, there's nothing worse than a corroded battery. And hear me out here. You know, you're working in the engine bay, you brush your clothes up against this corrosion here, you know, you touch it with your hand, you get it on your skin. It'll start burning your skin. It'll actually eat holes through your clothing. I had a, a cousin of mine who once picked up a battery in this condition and was carrying it against his shirt, a nice silk shirt, and uh, he kind of fell asleep on the couch and woke up the next day and he had massive holes in his shirt. He had to replace his really expensive Why silk shirt. Why the hell was he wearing a silk shirt? Well, I'd taken him out for a couple of drinks and the car I was driving, the battery died. It had a spare in the back because it used to die all the time. So he fetched it out the trunk and carried it to the front for me to put it in and he was holding it against his uh, shirt, his special, really expensive silk go out on the town shirt. And uh, he wasn't very pleased. He kind of blamed me for that. Now, in order to save your silk shirts and more importantly, your skin, get yourself some gloves. Now, I'm going to introduce you to a little friend of mine, WD-40. I love WD-40. I use WD-40 on everything. If I could put my car and soak it in WD-40, drown it in WD-40, I would. But anyway, this is a good way to start. You pour WD-40, or spray it, I should say, all over the corroded battery terminals, and it just helps, you know, contain that stuff and helps break everything, uh, break everything up. And uh, what you'll see here is that I'm struggling with this nut, and the reason is the nut from corrosion has actually kind of changed its shape. So I had to try different size spanners, as I call them. You probably call them wrenches. But um, I had to try various different ones in order to kind of get it loose. Now we're going to talk about this silly little screw later. And you'll see it's, it's there for a reason, but it's not really a good reason. But something more concerning is that the battery itself is actually loose. You see, the factory hold down for the battery doesn't exist because, well, someone put an aftermarket air filter on here and usually it connects to that. So they've put this kind of cheap uh, wing nut slash metal strip type universal battery hold down in here, which because of all the corrosion actually corroded through and broke. So let's give it a little squirt of WD-40 and we'll get back to that later because that's nasty. Now, while that soaks away, let's just get that nut off of the terminal there. And you can see very clearly just how badly it was deformed by all the corrosion. Um, this is not something we're going to keep. You throw this away, keep it away from pets and kids and anything like that, and uh, don't taste it because it's very acidic and sour. Okay, now we got to get this uh, battery terminal connector off here. And I'm first going to try clean it up a little bit with this rag of mine, which has a bit of WD-40 in it. You can see all the particles flying around, so try not to breathe this stuff in. I can't think it's good for you. Um, I'm going to give it a few love taps with the hammer here and see if uh, it wants to move. And of course, it's moving a little bit, but uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. This little screw that I mentioned earlier has to come out. Now, the reason that screw was in there in the first place was the previous owner had obviously put it in there because the battery terminal connector had corroded so badly that it would no longer clamp down properly onto the battery terminal. And of course, then not make enough contact and the car probably wasn't starting. It was making that kind of clicking noise. You may have heard it before if you have a loose connection. So now that I've removed that, this comes straight off. And yeah, look at that rubbish. Why even bother trying to keep something like this? I mean, if it's not clamping down anymore, if it's corroded away, just get a new one. They're cheap. And that's exactly what we did, is we got ourselves some new battery terminal connectors. But of course, we have to clean the battery terminal properly. Otherwise, if you put it on a dirty terminal, it's just going to corrode all over again. So there are a couple of ways you can do this. 
easiest way, just take WD-40 and, uh, I don't know, a, a sponge or a scotch Bright or something like that and clean it yourself. Or you can pick up one of these cool little battery terminal cleaner tools from Auto Riley's. They're, I don't know, a dollar or two, super easy. So you just kind of want to clean all the corrosion off and make sure you have a nice clean connection for your new battery terminal connection. Now, as you can see, we actually have two wires here, which we're going to have to somehow make fit into the single battery terminal connector, because we're not going to be using this other weird sort of connector that's on here. But these wires are in bad shape, and the last thing you want to do is put wires that are rusty and corroded into a nice new connector, because it'll just make the new connector all corroded too. So what we're going to do is get some wire cutters, and we're actually going to clean these wires up a little bit. And we'll start by, of course, stripping some of the insulation off of the ends of these wires so that we have enough to fit into our new battery terminal connector. Now you'll see I also stripped off or cut off some of the sort of frayed and damaged copper wire at the end there because that stuff's brittle, it's probably going to break, so just get rid of it. But be very careful you don't cut your wires too short. You have to make sure they can still reach the terminal of the battery, otherwise, you know, it's going to be a real pain. You'll have to go and somehow try and extend these wires. So I made sure that there was enough slack, they could still reach the terminal. I got rid of the insulation, and just as a safeguard, of course, I used my good old friend WD-40 to get rid of any corrosion or rust that might be hiding in the wires there, because that stuff will spread. Anyway, wire cutters is all you need. Get rid of all the excess insulation, and once you have enough space, you can start to try and fit it inside the terminal. You know, this is really straightforward. Just loosen the, the bolts here with a spanner. And now this is something you want to tighten down really, really tight. Because if it's loose, it's very possible that it could vibrate loose and come off while you're driving. And that would actually cause a lot of problems. If you've got a more modern car, it would cause the car to die. Uh, an older car like this would still keep going, but uh, possibly cause you to cut out on the highway. So just make sure that this is incredibly tight. Now we're finally ready to put our new terminal collector on the terminal. It's very straightforward. It might not fit properly at first, but just tap it down with a hammer or use a flathead screwdriver to pry it open a little bit. But make sure you get a good solid tight fit. Because if this is even just a little bit loose, if it rattles around, it's going to lose connection. You, your electronics are going to go haywire in the car. And of course, when you try to start the car, if you ever hear like a kind of a clicking sound, it's usually because one of these terminals is a little bit loose. So we've got a nice solid fit. Let's make sure that we tighten it down nice and tight. And then, of course, we move on to the other side, which is exactly the same. So just rinse and repeat. And of course, don't take it for granted, but red is always positive and black is always negative. But as you can see in this car, the wiring harness is black for both. So now I'm happy with the battery. The car starts every time now. We've got no issues with connections. But now this engine bay has to be taken care of. So in the next episode, I'll be replacing the expansion bottle for the cooling system. It's very important because believe it or not, this little bottle is a huge part of your pressurized cooling system. And without it, you can overheat and uh, spill coolant all over the sidewalk. So it's definitely something you need. Stick around for that. And we'll actually try to spruce this engine up a little bit because, you know, let's face it, if you want to open up your hood and show somebody what's under there. You don't want it to be a disgusting mess. Now, I can't wait to teach you in the next episode how to spruce up your engine properly. I know engines can seem a little bit intimidating, but I promise you what I did to spruce up this engine, anybody with a set of spanners can do it. So stick around and don't forget that in the description, you'll find links to every single thing I used in this video. So if you're looking for battery terminal connectors or WD-40 or whatever it is that I used, you'll find it there. Anyway, guys, cannot wait to see you in the next episode of Worthless Whips. Don't forget, guys, if you want to be a huge part of the show, go over to patreon.com slash worthlesswhips. You'll always get an early release, whether it's the main episode or the fixed episodes. Also, you'll have a chance to contact us directly and see all kinds of cool, fun, behind-the-scenes footage, pictures, and descriptions of how we did everything. One of the most fun parts is actually you can vote on the next car that we do. So we have a poll up right now. If you join the patron, you can actually go in and vote on the future cars. We have a few lined up. And in the near future, we will actually be giving away to a patron one of these very cars. Thank you so much, guys, and we'll see you on the next episode of Worthless Whips. To see